Inquiry Prize. This is a prize given about questions. All of us start with curiosity about the world we live in. We begin that way. And then, as time goes on, people say, okay, stop asking why. <laughs> but really, it's important to continue to ask why, though in a socially acceptable way. <laughs> Not like some three-year-olds, right? But, but it's important. And indeed, in science, it's very much at the heart. At the heart of science is wonder. What are things like? Why is the world the way it is? Or is it really that way? That type of question. And often in school, you are rewarded for answers. Answers to someone else's questions. A lot of attention to that. And that can, at times, get boring. If you pose your own question, you take some ownership of that idea. And that really is something special. And it's between the time you ask the question and the time you think you get some answers, there's a huge learning process that goes on. The advances in science often come not from answers, but from asking the right questions. How would you feel if you were asked such questions as, when did molecules come into being? How are shells made? Why aren't plants black? These are some of the winning questions that we've had. Incidentally, for fun, just so you know, <laughs> when did molecules come into being? Young woman, age 11. Okay. How are shells made? Young woman, age 15. Why aren't plants black? Young man, age 15. There are many more such questions. And it's been hard for our, this jury to receive so many interesting questions to come to a conclusion, but we have. And to tell you about this process, I'm going to call on Dr. Andres Mirschen from MIT to explain. The molecule side, which Kreatoran is uh, behind, uh, is uh, a unique um, enterprise where we're trying to grab the kids away from Facebook and MySpace and all these other things, and these distractions, and connect them to mentors where they can still enjoy the Web 2.0 type of experience, but talk about science and um, interact in a safe and, uh, and uh, proper environment. We have had uh, almost 10,000 unique visitors from uh, 100 countries in the world. Uh, Professor Zayer mentioned the kids, they, they seem to be curious when they're born, and uh, that's probably part of their biology, that they have to be curious to learn about the world. And that's uh, slowly this, uh, this wanes and it goes away. And uh, those that remain curious and, and childish, perhaps, uh, sometimes end up being uh, the most uh, important scientists that we have. Einstein. I prefer childlike rather than childish, but both. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see anything wrong with childish either. Uh, so, um, we want to show that science is fun. So, we don't want to make it sound like it's something uh, that is a homework or um, that they have to do. And there's no penalty for not asking a question, and there's no penalty for not participating. Uh, but there's a lot to be gained by going to the website that uh, Per runs and connecting with a mentor. And the mentors are people like the young people here in the audience. Graduate students and postdocs who we ask them to spend about two hours a month mentoring a kid in preparation for a submission of, a, of an interesting question to the prize. Some kids choose to use their mentors and other kids choose to just do it, uh, go it alone. So uh, this is how it works. We encourage them to ask questions. Ask questions. Uh, they ask one question, and then they tell us why they think it's an important question, because we're trying to, to explain to them that this is exactly how science works. You ask a question, you, see, you, you wonder if it's important, then you look at what other people have thought of as the answer to that question. Where have you looked for the answer? We ask them that so that we can prob, uh, uh, prob them to go into their parents, their teachers, the library, the internet, and uh, see what other, uh, you know, what other people think. Then, if they find that the answers that they found were unsatisfactory, 
then we say, well, what, what do you think that the, we, the scientists, should do, or maybe you can do, to find a better answer? And those that go and answer this question well, uh, I think, are well on their way to becoming uh, a scientist, because that is exactly how a science project works. You ask a question, you look at the literature, you design an experiment, and then maybe you get the answer. Uh, optionally, and for the older kids, we uh, uh, ask them, and it's more for ourselves to look at what uh, the next generations are thinking about, we ask them to ponder what do they think the quest for, their, for the answer to their question is going to do to themselves, their community, and the world at large, uh, because we want to instill this uh, feeling that science is relevant to, to the world and uh, it changes how, how things work. So what do they get? They get a uh, medal, which is right here, which was designed by Shu Wang, who I've identified already. And it's engraved on the front side, it's right here, with a molecule. And uh, I wish I had another prize to give for those who be able to identify what that molecule is. It is possibly, I shouldn't give a hint, but uh, it's a very famous molecule, but it's very difficult to identify when shown from that angle. Anybody have an idea what it is there on the left? Yes? DNA. Very good. It's DNA looking down at the X. Who said that? There you go. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> so the medal is engraved with our motto, which is curiosity, creativity, honesty, and knowledge. And the certificate, which was designed by uh, Liz Ball, is uh, the same molecule, only hand painted. And then the uh, name of the winner is uh, hand uh, painted again in calligraphy. And of course, the, uh, the sweet part of the deal is that they get the latest gadget from Apple, which is an iPod Touch, which is a wireless device, works anywhere with a 2.4 gigahertz um, uh, Wi-Fi network. You can get on the web, you can do Excel, Word, uh, uh, anything else uh, that, that you may want to do with a Mac. And here they come the winners. Uh, we decided to give uh, girls and boys uh, equal prizes, equal number of prizes. And these are not ordered in any particular order. These are all winners. We don't have first place, second place. So these are random order. And we have Brittany Wakefield, uh, 15 years old, from USA. Uh, how are shells made? And Ang Kui Yan, 16, from Singapore. What is between protons and neutrons in the nucleus? Kelsey Ketcherson, uh, 15, USA. How do we do things? <laughs> Ava Violich, 11. You say, when did molecules come into being? Katie Osman, 14, you say, what are emotions? And of course, they had to answer the subparts of the questions, which we don't show you. And uh, some of the more cryptic ones, such as how do we do things, have more meat to them once you get into what they actually mean. And they say, well, we're a bunch of molecules, and the world's a bunch of molecules. How come our molecules are so special, and the rest of the molecules aren't? And they get quite deep into, uh, into asking profound questions. For the boys, we have Oliver Gosher from the uh, UK, 12 years old. A fellow that have huge brains, why are they not the most intelligent creatures on the earth? Uh, uh, Vladimir uh, Lippertz, 15 years old, from USA, why, why aren't plants black? And uh, I think if, uh, it was one of the favorite questions of, our, uh, of uh, 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 Professor Nazari here. And uh, for those that are wondering why, what he means by that, uh, if you look into his question, he asks, well, since I was told in school that black absorbs more light, therefore more energy, why haven't the plants evolved to absorb more energy? Wouldn't that be better? For you? And uh, there's, there's actually a lot of uh, science behind that. And uh, in fact, he goes on to, to suggest that perhaps then we should look into our solar panels and see maybe we should be making them green instead of uh, silicon colored. <laughs> maybe there's some advantage to be gained from looking at the, at the biology of so, uh, Adam Patrick, uh, 13th of the UK, asks, why do tea leaves gather in the center when a cup of tea is stirred instead of going to the outside, as centrifugal forces would suggest? Um, Adib Nazirudin, 17th from Switzerland, asks, what is the origin of our thinking? If the brain controls nearly all of our body, what makes the brain control itself? So, I had that until I don't know. And uh, Jacob uh, Bilfell, 15th of USA, what is the nature of all matter? And I think what he's trying to get there is, is there some fundamental um, uh, unifying concept, perhaps such as the King's Boston. Well, when he doesn't mention it, I think that's what he's talking about. So these are the winners. Uh, and I want to congratulate them all if they're watching on, uh, on our website.